uh, your story is such a is such a unique one that is really worth going over. So I would sure. love to start from um, you know your origin story and uh, what led you to led you to where you are today. Sure, sure. So, all right, the origin story. Well, well, I guess let's start with this. I mostly grew up in the countryside of France. Um, uh, and my dad is an artist, he's a painter, and he lives literally in the middle of nowhere. And mm -hmm. so we had this huge house full of books and arts and paintings, uh, but with no one around it. So I was like the only kid in my village. And then uh, we got a computer and I started making friends online. And I started... Um, a huge portion of what I do would actually be going on online. I, I went deep into Minecraft, started building virtual walls in Minecraft, essentially building servers, making new friends. And then I randomly came across the Oculus uh, Kickstarter from Palmer Lucky. Oh, wow. Long time ago. Yeah, long time ago. I probably was 14 at the time, 14 years old. And I thought well, this is the thing that I need, you know? I'm, I'm living here in the middle of nowhere in the countryside. I'm making all those friends online. Um, and a good chunk of the things I love doing are happening online. You know, I'm on Minecraft writing Java code to create my custom servers. I'm on Minecraft designing those texture packs, those mods. And we're hanging out with my friends on TeamSpeak. And I don't think Discord was around back then, so it probably was Skype. <laughs> Um, and with this device, with this Oculus, I could really be with them and we could spend this time together. And so I kind of got uh, absolutely obsessed with that. Uh, and I had no money. I was a teenager. I couldn't afford to buy an Oculus. And so I thought, well, maybe I can build one by myself. And I was extremely lucky. I had this crazy, crazy math professor um, who also taught me programming. And, and I told him about m this idea of mine of wanting to build a VR headset. And I came up with a bunch of, you know, things I needed to learn in order to do that. Uh, you know, just basic physics, you know, to be able to calculate the position of the users. Um, learning how to uh, do compression more effic efficiently. So I would be able to transmit data from the headset to the computer faster. I just came up with all those questions and, and he came and he came, he, he, gave me math classes and I started just working on that thing. And luckily enough, it worked out. And so by the time I was 15 years old, I had basically built with a couple hundred dollars that my math professor gave me, I essentially built the same thing as an Oculus. So I built my own VR headset from scratch, same features as an Oculus, built it alone. And, and then as I said, playing along, playing with it, spending a lot of time using it, um, posting about it online, and that's when uh, Facebook at the time, no Meta, heard about it. And luckily for me, uh, David Marcus came across it. I don't know if he still remembers me, but that changed my life. Uh, David Marcus uh, saw this and introduced me to Atman Binstock, who was the chief architect of Oculus. And they invited me over to the US. They flew me mm. out to the USA. Uh, I got to spend some time with the people over at Facebook, realized how hard it is to build a hardware company. I also realized that as much as I loved what they were trying to build, that my vision for the future of VR was different and not really aligned with theirs. And so what I did is I came back to France as a 15 years old teenager, took everything I had built, so I built the hardware, I built the software, I built the firmware, I even built pretty bad SDKs, but still, I <laughs> built SDKs at the time. Um, and I open sourced everything, all of it. You open sourced everything? Everything I had built. Instead of making a company out of it? Um, when I was in the Valley, I had people very interested in, in the headset I had created. Um, interested in using it, or you mean interested in investing, or in interested in making it go to market, basically. Ah, okay. Uh, but yeah, I decided that instead I would um, take all of it, open source it, and see what happens. Why? Why? Well, first off, I think that um, 
I was very um, realistic about the fact that as a 15 years old, um, it would be unbelievably hard for me to get enough capital and, and, and basically to do all the things that I would need to do in order to be a serious competitor to mm -hmm. Oculus. It was very clear to me that I, was, I, I didn't have the tools to do that at the time. And so if I cannot do that, then the other option is just sell, sell it, right? And although that sounded good, um, it just came to my mind that another option was actually maybe I could try to distribute the making of that headset. And maybe I personally, I'm not ready to compete with, with Oculus, but maybe if I can convince a few hundred or maybe a few thousand people to build a headset themselves and build software for it and build tools for it, maybe as a group we stand a little bit more of a chance. And that was my thesis. I open sourced it, worked pretty well. Um, I wasn't really going to school much at the time, but that really <laughs> that put the nail on the coffin and made me completely stop uh, going to school. And this was this was uh, high school or uni already? Uh, high school, high school. Although I wasn't really attending. So you didn't go to high school after a few years. You're like, this is enough for me. I just came back for the final exam. Okay. Um, and that's it, yeah. I, I hope that didn't feel like too much of a chore. The exam itself was like unbearable. Oh, no, that's fine. I, my math professor um, did something really, I call him sensei. I did something pretty crazy for me. When we were in middle school, he just told me, hey, if you want to make high school sort of more enjoyable, why don't you do the entire curriculum now while you're still in middle school? Hmm. And this way you have like a lot of free time in high school. So that's what I did. And so, you know, regardless, high school was just like a big playground for me because like I'd already done all the stuff with him. 